Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting nail polish drip and I'm going to be sipping on my coffee and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you can find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I will call brown, Mars black, deep yellow, fire red, and fluorescent purple. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm gonna use for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number 12 round synthetic brush, and I have a number four round synthetic brush, and I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. Of course, you can switch those up too if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes, and down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using, from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and chalk and all that good stuff is in there for you. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting the background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a really dark gray color that I'll be using for the majority of the canvas for the background, but we'll give ourselves a little bit of a lighter area that can give us some, some atmospheric dimension in the background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a dark gray. I've already done a little bit so you can kind of see where I'm headed. I need to use some of my brown later, but I, I want to use a lot of it for this mixing step, so I'm just going to separate some of my brown out. I don't need a lot for later, just a little bit. I'm going to use the rest of it with some black to get a really nice dark gray. I don't need a ton of black in comparison to the brown because I know that the black will very easily take over. So it's almost, I would say, maybe a quarter black to three quarters brown, maybe almost half black to um, you know twice as much brown. You're gonna get a really dark chocolatey, maybe like a dark chocolate kind of color. And then once you achieve that, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white paint into it just to get it to be a little bit on the grayer side as opposed to like a real dark, um, almost a blackish brown kind of color. So the white will allow me to have a little bit better opacity, which means you won't be able to see through it as much. And it's going to allow it to be a little bit more on that grayer side. So I'm gonna add just a touch more white in through here. And this is looking pretty good. It's gonna get a little bit darker as it dries, but I'm just going for a nice dark, warm, gray type of a color. So this is looking pretty good to me. And then once you've got it in the um, color that you want, just making sure that I've got it all nice and mixed enough here. So once you've got it in the color that you want, you could even test it out and see if you want to add or subtract any of the color to it. But once you've got it there, what we're going to do is we're going to still mix again. <laughs> I just want to make sure I have a nice solid color here. So it's taken me just a second to spin it all around. There we go. I think I've, I think I've got it now. So once you've got it into the um, spun around enough. We're just gonna be painting that entire background with this color. So your may, yours may end up being a little bit more browner or a little bit more grayer than mine. It really is okay whatever value it turns into or whatever shade of gray it turns into. I'm just looking for a nice dark neutral type of a background that's gonna allow for 
my nail polish and my fingers to really stand out and be the star of the show. So I'm just using a left to right type of brush stroke. Um, I may end up doing a second coat on this after I see how it is when it dries. If I have any little streakiness or anything like that, I might end up um, doing a second coat. But right now I'm just kind of putting it on on the whole canvas to make sure that I've got a nice good coverage throughout and once I've got it all on then I'm gonna um, lighten up a little bit of this mid um, range to give us a little bit of a highlighted type of effect behind um, those fingers but right now again just kind of getting this all on here working my way down towards the bottom and again you can go all the way to the edges. You could even paint along the sides of your canvas. That's gonna allow for a really nice and professional looking canvas that looks like it's all nice and complete and you've paid enough attention or as much attention to the whole canvas as you do to the front of the canvas. So that adds a nice effect. So once I've got it all painted on here with this gray color, what I'm gonna do is without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up white paint. You don't need a lot. I'm just gonna kind of pick up about that much and I'm going to be applying it in the center area down here. And if you feel like you have too much, you can certainly just wipe your, your um, brush off on your paper towel. And I'm just gonna start rubbing this in. Because I'm doing it like a wet on wet type of um, process where that background was still wet when I did this, it's going to blend nice and freely on your canvas. And if you go too light or too dark, no worries. But as I'm blending this, I just keep going over it in different directions. This is going to allow for these colors to really just blend in nicely together. You could let it dry and kind of rub on a lighter area if you want to. So whatever process works for you is totally fine. You just want to keep kind of blending it in until you feel like you've got that illuminated type of area that, sh that is appealing visually to you. And then I just kind of keep working it around the edges so I can get it all to kind of softly blend in with one another. And then once I feel like I've got it pretty well done, I'm gonna let it dry. And if there's any areas that I feel I want to get brighter or darker or have them blend in a little bit more, I would continue to work it a little bit. You don't really see this off camera, but I keep on wiping my brush off on my paper towel. This allows me to kind of pick up any excess paint that might be um, too much on the, on the canvas, so I can just kind of keep rubbing it off on my paper towel. So I'm, in essence, kind of thinning out that paint and allowing it to, to really blend it in well together. And then once you've got it the way that you want, like I said, you can let it dry for a minute and make any adjustments that you feel would benefit you. And then we will be utilizing our chalk for the next step. So once you've got this background done, you can put the large brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our nail polish brush and the fingers. I'm gonna be using my my chalk, and I do wanna forewarn you before we start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry because it's much easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is a wet canvas. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dried out like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just walk you through a series of dots and we're gonna connect the dots and hopefully by the time we're done, we'll have a couple, we'll have three fingers and a nail polish brush to paint those fingernails with. So I'm gonna start with my fingers down at the bottom so that way it gives us leeway to move the brush if we need to, if our fingers turn out a little bit different than mine do, or if your fingers turn out different than mine do. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with the middle finger. I'm gonna have three fingers and they're just gonna kind of be up like this. I'm gonna start with the first one is gonna be pretty center in my canvas. So you're gonna to wanna to find center left to right, and I'm gonna bring it up from the bottom about a third of the way. So to find where a third of the way is, you can kind of eyeball halfway up or down your canvas. Then you're gonna eyeball kind of about 
a quarter, halfway between here and the bottom, and it's somewhere in the middle of those. And then you're gonna just kind of come over to about the center of your canvas. So I'm maybe about six, six and a half inches above the bottom of my canvas, somewhere in through here will get me into that vicinity. And then I'm gonna come down from that all the way to about a half of an inch um, away from the bottom of my canvas. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a sliver down there. Then I'm just gonna make markers for the top of the other two fingers. So I'm gonna kind of split the, dis the difference from from here to here and so maybe right about here and I'm going to come down maybe about an inch inch and a half so that's going to give me the top of the right finger and then on the left hand side I'm going to bring this one maybe um, it's going to be tipped a little bit so I'm going to come about halfway between these two somewhere in through here and I'm going to have my the tip of it I would say right about in through here so they're gonna shift and be turned a little bit but this will give us a good um, starting point so I'm gonna do the middle finger first I'm gonna have it I would say about three inches wide so what I'm really gonna do is just make a big oval to connect these kind of like your own fingernail so I'm gonna start up in through here I think I might give myself a couple of little barriers to make sure I don't go too wide so I just if you split the difference maybe an inch and a half on one side and an inch and a half on the other that'll keep you from going too wide and then I'm just going to kind of connect all my dots keeping my corners kind of rounded like it does on your own finger you can have pointy fingernails you can have round fingernails whatever is visually appealing to you maybe you've fashion it after your own fingernails, so feel free to kind of have fun with that. And then the other two, I'm not going to have the bottom part um, of the skin showing on the other two. These are just going to be partial nails. So on, we'll do this one first because it's closer to me. <laughs> so on the bottom of my canvas, I'm going to come in from the bottom left about a half of an inch, and then I'm going to bring this over. I would say, again, I'm going to have this almost three inches wide, two and a half to three inches wide. So I would say probably somewhere over in through here. And I'm gonna have this one tipped a little bit. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna give myself this side like this. And then this um, top is gonna be a little bit to the side. It doesn't have to be anything too major. So something like that will take me, we'll get take care of that one. And then on this side over here, I'm gonna come over from the right hand side of my canvas I would say maybe about an, an inch inch and a half something like this and then maybe about two two and a half inches from there I think I might I might drop the tip of this I think I want this one a little bit lower than this one I'm going to drop this you can drop yours too it's chalk <laughs> so we can make it a little bit lower if we want to I think I want that right hand um the, the right finger to be a little bit lower. So I did that, and then I'm just gonna, again, connect these with my long kind of arc, oops, just pushed my canvas, my long kind of arcing line and curve that tip, and then do the same thing over on the left side. Maybe keep this a little bit leaning to the left in through there. And then what I'm gonna do is I need to add the, the sides of the skin. So I'm gonna do the middle finger first so I don't make it too, too wide. I'm gonna just kind of go to the to the right and to the left of this finger. I'm gonna come about almost halfway down my nail. You could really um, pick whatever height you want depending on how long you want that fingernail to be. So I'm gonna come, oh maybe if this is about halfway, I'm a little bit above that halfway point. And then I'm just gonna bring it in a, this little curving line and bring it down to the bottom. So making sure it's kind of even on the other side or in a similar position and then just bring it down in through here and then I'm going to do that to all of the nails so I'm going to bring a little curved line out like this or all of the fingers I should say a little curved line out like this and then do the same thing over on this side curved line bring it down curved line bring it down and that's all I'm going to do for for the fingers and of course you can adjust them because it's chalk <laughs> which is a beautiful thing and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my paint polish nail polish applicator brush up here and it's going to be dripping so i'm going to have my the farthest part of my drip is going to come maybe about two inches above my nail or almost in the center of my canvas so somewhere right about here is where the, my drip is going to happen i'm going to have my brush the um at the 
um, the handle of the brush is going to be out in that direction. So if you find like the center of your canvas, go over about a half of an inch to an inch, make a mark, and then go over about two inches and make another mark. I'm going to be having it coming down at an angle. So the, um, the part, so this will be the um, handle and then we'll have a little bit of the end brush part. So I'm going to put that um, that area where the two meet right about here. So this is maybe about three inches from the top of my canvas and over from here to the left a little bit. And then I'm going to connect these guys. So I'm going to come down with a diagonal line and then just curve it in like that. And same thing here, going to come down with a diagonal line and then just curve it in towards that marker in through there. I'm going to have my um, the bristles of my brush are just going to kind of splay out in a diagonal type of way, maybe about two inches away from here. So you can just make yourself a little bit of a marker and then just kind of splay it out like this. Just make yourself a little bit of a triangle type of shape like that. That resembles the end of a nail polish applicator <laughs> brush. And then I'm going to get it to drip off of here and come into like a water or a paint brush or paint droplet type of way. So I want, I'm want i imagining it to be dripping down with gravity taking over. So I'm just going to kind of give myself this little drip like that and then just a little almost like a teardrop type of a motion. And that's all I'm going to be doing for my outline. We're going to be using our medium brush for the next step so you can just get ready. Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for our fingers and our um, nail polish brush. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are purple, red, yellow, white, and brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first make myself a neutral type of skin tone that we'll use for the base for the skin as well as part this nail and part of this nail for um, that base coat for them. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to be using uh, yellow, red, brown, and white. I've already pre-mixed myself a little bit so you can, oops, that was extra red on my brush there. <laughs> um, so you can see how, what color I'm going to be going for. So I've got a little bit of yellow, a touch of red, just a little bit of brown, and a little bit of white. So I usually start with about equal parts of those four colors. And then once I start spinning it around, I can make adjustments accordingly. So I think I want this a little bit lighter and pinker. So I'm gonna add a bit more white and a touch of red to get it to be that little bit pinker, maybe a little bit more duller than this. So now I'm going to add a touch of brown and a little bit of white. And I just kind of keep adjusting it until I feel like I've got a good skin tone. This is looking pretty good to me. And what I like to do a lot of times is test it against my skin. So I can just pick my brush and put it right next to my skin. This might be actually a little bit too um, vibrant for me. So I'm going to dull it down with a touch of white and a little bit of brown. So you can kind of just keep adjusting it until you feel like you've got it in a good zone. So that's actually a little bit better for me. Now, retest it on my skin, that's looking pretty good. So that's the base color that I'm gonna be using for my skin areas as well as a couple of my nails. So I don't need it to be perfect right now. I'm just gonna kind of give myself a little bit of a um, base coat in through here. And of course you could make your skin tone any color that you want. You could go lighter or darker, whatever um, is visually appealing to you. And then I'm gonna do this entire fingernail in through here with this color. I'm going to leave a little bit of my chalk showing between the nail and the skin. So that way, um, as I go through my painting process, I can continue to have the, that separating um, marker for me visually. I'm going to bring it all the way to the end of my chalk mark. And while you're painting, if you find that you don't want to go all the way to your chalk mark, like around the edges, that's okay. Just wait for your paint to dry and you can erase any chalk with a little bit of pencil or a little bit of water. So just know that that chalk 
um, outline that you made doesn't you don't have to paint all the way to it if it's if you feel that you made it too wide or it's a little bit different shape than you wanted just leave it and then erase it with some water um, once the surrounding paint has dried and then on this nail here I'm going to just paint a portion of it because I want this nail to look like it is partially um, painted so I'm going to just kind of bring my skin color up towards the tippy top and then just bring it down I would say maybe somewhere in this region you can bring it down as far as you want it can be uneven that's going to be the beautiful part about coloring it in later with the um, with the other with the nail polish because it'll look like it's partially painted which is a fun fun thing to do and then I'm just going to bring this skin color all the way to my chalk mark and bring it down to the bottom and bring it right to the edge of this whole nail in through here. And then once I've got my skin areas painted in, we're going to work on painting the base coat for the nail polish colored areas. So that's going to be the entire applicator, um, the entire brush applicator, because when you put a brush inside of a nail polish bottle, the whole applicator gets the nail polish paint on it. So we're going to paint the whole thing with that with the base color for that. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to create a dark magenta type of color using my red and my purple. And the reason I'm doing this, I, my, my fingernails are going to be kind of on the redder side by the time we're done, but I'm utilizing this magenta as a nice deep base coat for it. It'll turn out really like a nice rich color on top of this gray. So, oops, that's a little bit of my gray I don't need over there. So I'm going to be utilizing, this is where I'm headed, right in through here. I got to that by adding red to my purple. So I'm just going for this really dark magenta type of color. I'm going to keep some of my red at fully red that we'll use for later but right now I'm just going for a nice deep magenta kind of color and I'm going to paint these areas with a f just with this color so once you've achieved it somewhere between your purple and your red I'm just going to take it and paint in these sections so I know that this paint has a bit of translucency to it this the type of paint that I use is a um, thin bodied student grade paint so it tends to have a lot of um, translucency to it so it will take on the some of the color from the background so what's going to happen is as this dries it's going to take on some of that darkness from below and I utilize that to my advantage while I'm painting because I like to get these nice deep tones um, especially when I'm creating something that is three-dimensional or I'm trying to give it this three-dimensional appearance. So I'm bringing this all the way to my chalk mark, even um, going to paint over where these, air, where these um, little sections that we drew separated um, or kind of met each other. So something like this, just kind of painting over my chalk painting this entire area down in through here and again if a little bit of your chalk is still visible after this don't worry about it we will we'll get that to hide when we um, go to paint the whole thing in or again once it once the um, paint that you're putting on is dry if you still have a little bit of um, paint on the edges you can just erase it with some water or if you have a little bit of chalk on the edges you can just erase it with some water and then I'm going to go ahead and paint these fingernails in through here the ones that are already painted put this um, this dark magenta color on them in through here and when I and you can see I'm using a, a pretty vertical um, brush stroke to get this on here except for when I go to this little um, little tippy edge I'll just kind of slow down a little bit just to shape the edge of that nail the way that I want to and again the edges of your nails can be pointy they can be oval they can be square every person who gets their nails done likes the the edges of their nails in their own specific shape so whatever is your um, is your pleasure just go with go with that because that's what's going to make your painting nice and personal to you or to somebody that you know and then I'm just going to kind of use my light brush stroke now because this paint is um, translucent you may get a little bit of streakiness it, as you're painting this in don't worry about that we will um, take care of that as we 
as we do the, the next layers on it. And then I just have this little section in through here. So again, I'm gonna slow down when, I, when I'm at this edge in through here so I can get a nice crisp um, edge to it like that. And then where it meets the skin tone, I really just wanna kind of give it a, a painterly kind of look like the um, who's ever applying the paint from above has just kind of partially done this. So I'm just gonna kind of bring up a, a few areas in through here and then just make it nice and smooth around the edge. And you'll most likely be able to see that skin color underneath that edge as well. Again, don't worry about that. We will we'll get that to hide away in a future step. And then once you've got this all nice and done, we are going to be utilizing um, our small brush for the next step. So you can just put this large brush or, or this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be finishing the skin on the fingers and the light nails. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are brown, white, red, and that skin tone that we created. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, in essence, kind of make the nail portion that's above the, the main part of the hand a little bit lighter than the actual skin. And then we'll add some shadows, um, I'll put a little bit of pinkness in the nail bed itself on this one and we'll add some highlights and we'll be done after that. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first make myself a very light tan color. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to be using white with a little bit of my brown. Where is it? Here's my brown right here. And I'm really just going for something that is a little bit darker than white. I've got it right here so you can kind of see where I'm headed with it. I want this to be the kind of neutral lighter tone of my skin so and of those um, nails that are not painted. So this is how I'm going to accomplish this. I don't want to go all the way white because I need to save room for my bright highlights. So this is how I'm going to accomplish it by going a little bit darker than white in order to uh, um, get this effect going. So that's looking pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize a little bit of that. I'm going to um, designate an area on here which is going to be a little bit lower than where the top of the, the finger goes. So I'm going to just bring this down a little bit like this and just give myself an arcing line, something like this. And then I'm just going to rub in the color, this light color up at the top. So it'll look pretty light. Um, but you don't need to make it a solid color. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of rubbing it in so it takes on a little bit of that color from underneath. If you go solid on the color, that's okay too. We're gonna add a little bit of dimension to it in a minute, but um, if you still have some of that skin color underneath showing through, that's perfect. That'll make it look even more realistic. And I just kind of rub it so it looks like it's a nice natural kind of um, at, um, coverage and then I'm going to do the same thing for this this nail in through here so this one would in essence kind of come down to here but if you painted your um, your red a little bit lower you may want to have a different stopping point than I do I, I looks like I can pretty much go all the way to my red there might be a little area in through here which would be the nail bed itself but right now I think I can get away with utilizing this lighter color for the um, top part of the unpainted nail. And then again, just kind of rubbing it in so I have a pretty good coverage all the way to the edges of it and down into those areas where it's meeting the, um, the painted part. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make myself a, a more pinker tone for here. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm going to make a very light pink I've got it started right here so you can see where, I, where I'm headed. All I did to get that was I utilized white with a touch of red. So I'm really just going for this light pinkish tone that I can utilize for the base coat for the nail bed itself. 
I don't want it super duper dark. I just really want it to be a little bit, um, if this, this is my skin color, so I just want it to have a little pinky, pinky overtone to it. So I've got that going. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of rub it on top of this nail bed portion. And again, you can, you don't need a ton of paint. You can utilize it as almost like, um, just a scrubbing type of effect to give you um, a, a thin layer of this pink color on top of that nail bed. And again, just kind of rubbing it in so it takes on a little bit of the color from underneath it. Doesn't have to be perfect. And you can get it to kind of go right up to where the actual nail itself um, starts. And we'll get that to look a little bit more natural in a minute. But what now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, while these two are kind of drying, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna finish the skin portion. So I'm gonna be putting a little bit of a shadow where the nail meets the skin, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow on the exterior edges of my skin, and then I'll just put um, maybe a second coat of my skin tone and a little bit of highlight on the rest of the skin. So I'm gonna be using brown paint to start, and what I'm gonna do is I'm in essence gonna kind of rub it in and kind of overlap it on my nail and on my skin right in this area in through here. So I don't want a firm line. I'm really just kind of letting it intermingle with that nail color and with the skin itself. And this is gonna give us a really nice kind of natural transition from the nail itself to the skin. And this will just make it look like the skin dips in just a little bit right next to that nail. And then I'll do the same thing for each for each finger so just taking and you don't need a lot of paint on your brush just going to take a little bit of that brown paint and just almost kind of scrub it overlapping both of those two sections and again i'm not going very far into either section this is just allowing me to have that little bit of effect um, to make it look like a shadowy type of area going to do it on on this little guy too so this way it still gives you that shadowy area even if um, this fingernail is unpainted it would still have a little bit of a shadowy kind of area where the two of them meet and while I have it on my brush on this finger I'm gonna put a little bit uh, just rubbing a teeny tiny bit of the remnants that I have on my brush right in this area to me looks like a little shadowy area as the nail kind of um, releases itself from the finger itself and I'm gonna, again, I just have a little bit of brown on my brush. I'm rubbing it up the sides of this fingernail in through here. So this is gonna give me a nice natural look to the actual um, fingernail itself. And if you had room on this side to do so, you could certainly do it as well. Again, remnants of the brown are on my brush. That's all I'm doing for that. I'm gonna do the same thing with the outside of the skin. So again, just a teeny tiny bit of brown paint on my brush. And because I know that my brown paint is nice and translucent, I can overlap it into that background as well. So I'm really not nerv too nervous about it overlapping and maybe ending up um, in my background a little bit. I'm, I'm more concerned about having giving myself a nice kind of transition on the edges of the fingers. But if I get some of it in my background gray, I'm okay with that. And I am gonna add a little bit of a highlight onto my skin as well in a minute. So if this doesn't turn out perfect, that's okay. We'll, we'll utilize our skin tone to uh, make it look more natural. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this brown over on the edge of the skin over here and do the same thing for this third finger. And just a teeny tiny bit of the brown will help me get that in through there. Oops, I had a little bit of red on my brush there too, so we're gonna have a little red in the finger. <laughs> but, and then I'm just, I picked up a little bit more brown, just getting it to blend in over here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some of my skin color and get that portion to just make sure that these two talk well together, the shadowy part and the skin. And I'm also in a minute, so I'm just really looking for areas that might be a little bit clunky where they, um, where the shadow met the skin area and just getting them to blend in a little bit better. If you have any of those areas, you can utilize your um, under color for um, the skin color that we started to get those to blend in. Now I'm gonna use that, um, the light tan, that brown and white that we had, I'm gonna utilize that as my highlight color for the skin. 
So I don't need to do much. I'm going to put little highlights maybe at the top of the finger, maybe in through here, just to give myself a little bit of dimension. Maybe we've got a little wrinkles coming down where the um, where the nail bed meets the meets the nail. You can utilize your tan and your skin color if you want to. If you need them to blend in a little bit, feel free to intermingle the two of them together. So really, I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot, just kind of adding that dimensional element to it. So picking up that light tan that we used for the fingernail and giving myself just a itty bit of itty bitty bit of a highlight maybe on the tips of the fingers something like this and then maybe a little bit down that finger itself if I felt that it warranted it and if you went too too much like I feel like that's a little bit too much I'm just going to pick up some of my skin color and just rub it in and get it to blend in that way so you can always reverse the action by just picking up a little bit of that skin color and then I'm going to do oops going to do the same thing on these on this little finger in through here so my light tan I'm going to just give myself a bit of a highlight in through here and you might find that you want your highlights more dramatic than mine or more subtle than mine it's going to be totally up to you your visual preference wherever it sits and and is comfortable for you and then once I have this done I just need to add a little bit more on these two fingernails so I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I want to add a little bit of um, a deeper pink onto the sides of this nail in through here so I can get a nice um, kind of contour to the fingernail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that pink that I had and add just a teeny tiny bit more red. So I'm going to deepen that pink just a tiny bit, a itty bitty bit, and I'm going to put a bit of that over on the sides of this fingernail. So something like this on that side and a little bit on this side. And you can, you know, wherever, you might find that you're more risky than I am and you want yours a little bit darker than mine. That's gonna be totally up to you, but I'm just gonna get it a little bit darker on these sides in through here. And then I'm going to put some big highlight on the front of it. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna utilize that, the tan plus white on my brush to give myself a contour highlight down the center of this nail. So it's going to be um, my tan plus a little bit of white on my brush. And you're going to want to make sure that this is pretty dry. Mine is nice and dry, so I'm pretty safe. And I'm not going to do it totally straight. I'm going to have a little bit of a, of a bend in it. So I'm just taking it and allowing it to blend in kind of an outward direction. I started pretty much in the center and then I'm just rubbing it out. So this way that highlight crosses over those two sections and really makes it look nice and natural. I'm gonna add a bit more of that highlight up on the top and then I'm gonna add a little, I'm gonna do the same thing on the left side and then we'll add a nice white streak going down so it'll look like it's really nice and shiny. So I've got this highlight down here. I'm gonna do that same thought process over here with a little bit of my tan plus white to give myself a little bit extra right down the center. We'll do a similar process when we do go into the red, but right now I'm just concentrating on these lighter nails. And now what I'm gonna do, I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel, picked up some white, and I'm gonna add the bright highlight. So I'm not gonna have it super straight. I'm gonna have it a little bit curved and I'm gonna have a couple different streaks in it. So I have white right now on my brush and I'm gonna take it from the top and I'm gonna kind of bring it down in a curved motion. So at the top, right in through here, and then just kind of bring it down in a curved type of motion. I'm gonna get a couple of streaks going. You can have them one thicker than the other, one can have more white in it, one can be a little bit more translucent than the other. So feel free to explore your reflective streaks in whatever way is comfortable for you. I'm gonna put a big bright one over in here at the top of that nail. And when I do this little curve, it's telling the viewer that the nail, the nail itself has a bit of a curve to it. So that's just a, another little, you know, little illusion trick that's gonna get the viewer to understand what, um, what the way of this object goes. And then you can fiddle with it all you want after this, maybe a little bit more of a streak coming down in through here. Fiddle with it as much as you want, and then we're gonna be utilizing this same brush for the next step, so you can just get ready.
Mm. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our red nails. I'm going to be using my medium or my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, red, that magenta color that we made, and some white. So I'm going to approach it in a similar fashion to how I did this one, which is kind of giving the shadow around the edges and that bright highlight um, on, on the shiny part that pokes out the most <laughs> on the glossy nail polish part. Um, so what I'm going to first do is do some shadows around the edges. I'm going to be using my magenta plus a teeny tiny bit of black. So I picked up magenta over here and a teeny tiny bit of black. You don't need a lot of black. You can always add more. It's really tough to take away if you have too much on it. So I'm going to start over on the left hand side here and I'm just going to kind of dust it down the side of that nail. I don't want to take it too far in to the nail, but I definitely want there to look like there's some contour um, action to it, which is going to make it look like it kind of dips in a little bit on those sides. Once I've got that darkness on the side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up more magenta to get it to to get that darkness to blend in with the main area of the um, of the nail. So you might find that you might need to pick up a little bit more black or a little bit more magenta, whatever kind of works for you. I recommend just kind of approaching it in a slow fashion so that way it, you visually see what it is that you want to do and if you want to add more feel free to do so. And then once I've got this one done, I'm feeling like that's pretty good. I'm just going to move on to my next one. And again, I'm just adding this contour on the sides to give it that roundness um, in, the, in the nail itself. Maybe a little bit more magenta here, just to curve out this, this corner in through here. And if you do anything and you're like, whoa, that was too much, like that's a little bit too much black, I just picked up a little bit more magenta just to get it to, to blend in. And then once it's blended, I just go on to the next one. So I'm going to go over here. So magenta plus a tiny bit of black paint to get this bottom area of the nail bed to just kind of curve in to that, um, into the skin area, give it that concave type of look and get it to blend out into the magenta. So you might be able to do it all with one, one shot, but if you feel like you didn't get it to blend the way that you want, that's when you would pick up a bit more magenta to get it to, to blend in. So I'm just going on either side in through here, getting that black to kind of work its way towards those edges. And then I'll pick up a little bit I'm sure I'm gonna pick up a little bit of magenta right now just to get this to blend in a little bit. And again, if you feel like you've done too much or you need to do more, just you just kind of keep adjusting it until you feel like you've got the intensity that you want. I know that sometimes visually, some of us like to see more of that drama. Some of us like to see less of it when it comes to these, um, these 3D type of aspects. So wherever your comfort zone is, is totally fine. And then once you've got that shadowy area in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to work on the highlight or the contour highlight, which is going to make the nail pop out a little bit. So I'm going to be kind of in the center of the nail in through here and I'm going to do a little bit lighter shade of my magenta. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my magenta plus a teeny tiny bit of white paint. So just a very little bit because I know how powerful that white paint is going to be. So just a teeny tiny bit of that white paint with the magenta is going to allow me to get this beautiful con like um, part of the nail that pops out and you might want the whole center area to pop out if you want it to look like it curves down in that vicinity um, like that the top of the nail curl curves backwards you don't want to bring this highlight all the way up to the top you just kind of bring it um, maybe halfway up and get it to dissipate, dissipate in the um, neighboring magenta. So just getting my little highlight on in through here and you might want to do a couple different layers wherever your comfort zone is. And I also will utilize the, um, the red itself, the not magenta, but the red without any additives in it. I'll use that in a minute, but Right now I'm going to put a little bit of this red plus a touch of, I mean magenta plus a touch of white on my brush to get the highlight 
going um, in the center of this one. So again, magenta plus a touch of white is gonna give me the part of the nail that I feel would bump out the most. So something like this, and then just get it to blend out into my neighboring magenta. So I'm picking up more of the magenta right now just to get it to um, fade out into the distance or into the darkness. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red. So that way I know that the red on top of this magenta is going to really make it nice and vibrant. So I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some red paint and I'm gonna high, bring this amp up the color of the nail with this red. I know it'll turn darker when it dries, but adding this red on top of the magenta is really gonna add a special kind of glossy glow to the color itself. So it's just another part of the magical illusion process in painting. So I'm utilizing my red on top of magenta to give myself an even more spectacular nail polish kind of color. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this one over here. So I have red paint on my brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of it kind of down this area in through here and just get it to blend in with that magenta that we originally had. And then I'm gonna put a really bright highlight on these nails. This, the nail that I'm working on now is gonna get a highlight that kind of crosses over the light area and the dark area. But right now, just getting that red to make my beautiful nail polish color. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting my bright highlight on. So I'm not gonna do anything with my brush. I just wiped it on my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up a touch of my magenta and white. So what I'm gonna do is kind of lay out where I want my highlight to go and then get it to kind of blend in and then we'll put a big, bright, beautiful, shiny part on it. So I'm gonna kind of start a little bit to the right of the center of the top of my nail and I'm gonna bring it down in a little bit of an arcing motion. So I have magenta plus white on my brush and this is going to give me the start of the bright highlight that I want to happen um, down the center of that nail. So magenta plus a little bit of white. I'm gonna kind of split my highlight so it looks like it is the moisture of the nail polish perhaps is either maybe it's still wet or maybe it's just so shiny and glossy that it's highlighting in a little split forma formation in through here. So something like that. Again, I'm still just using magenta plus my white so I can kind of plan this out without um, getting having it too invasive and you can just kind of keep adjusting it until it gets into the vicinity that you want and once I've got yeah that's looking pretty good to me once I've got it laid out where I want it and that's I'm, I'm digging that I'm gonna wash my brush and just pick up white paint and give myself a couple of real vibrant streaks down it I don't want to take up all the um, light magenta area but I do want to um, sell the story of this bright glossy highlight. So just a little bit of white paint on my brush. I'm going to do one streak in through there. I'm going to do one streak some somewhere in through here. Just bring it over just a little bit more in through here. Taking my time, resting my finger on my canvas to control where my little streak goes. So something like this and maybe I'll just get them to disappear down in through here, that's looking pretty good. And of course, again, if you do something that you don't like, just let it dry for a minute. You can always paint over it and make any corrections or modifications that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bright highlight on this one. So this one's gonna get a bright highlight on here and on here, but I wanna start with my magenta and white, just like I did on this left one. So magenta plus a little bit of white paint is gonna kind of lay it out on the reds on the red area for me. So I'm gonna get it to kind of come in through here. I think again I want I'm gonna need it to have a little bit of a curve to tell the viewer that this is in fact a you know a rounded type of or, or a nail that has a little bit of form to it. So I have the magenta plus a little bit of white on my brush. I'm just gonna kind of pull this down in through here. I think I'm gonna put a tiny bit more magenta on my brush just to dull it down just a little bit. We don't need it to be too, too bright on this first um, first pass, but I just wanna know where it's gonna be. And then I'm gonna um, wipe my brush off 
actually I'm gonna wash my brush because I'm gonna want to put white on this right side so I washed my brush I'm picking up some white paint and I'm gonna do my I'm gonna start my highlight up my brightest highlight on this right hand side I only really need white on this right side I suppose I could do white plus that tan but I'm gonna start with white and see if I can just do it with the white and then if I want um, some of the tan I can add that in and I'm just gonna kind of pull down these long streaks something like that I'm gonna put a little bit more in that center area because these are gonna cross over each other in just a minute making sure that I have a nice bright up at the top and then I'm just gonna kind of stop talking <laughs> I'm like I gotta concentrate I can't talk right now <laughs> but I'm just kind of pulling these down making sure I maintain some kind of control and and you can cross over into the um, nail polished area too a little bit if you want I'm gonna reload my brush with some white paint and I'm gonna put a bright highlight on this magenta part just like I did on that left hand nail so bright white is on my brush right now and I'm just gonna kind of pull this down and then once you've got these done you can fiddle with them all you want make any little adjustments we're gonna utilize this same brush for the next step so once you're ready you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our nail polish applicator with all of the paint on it. So I'm gonna be using my um, small brush. I'm gonna use the same colors. I'm gonna use magenta, red, black, and white. Same, same pretty, pretty much the same process to the red nails. So what I'm gonna first start with is um, black plus magenta on my brush so I can get my shadowy contour area. So I'm gonna have that on this bottom right side. I'll have a little bit on this left side just so we can show the, the form of it. Um, maybe a little bit on this edge here definitely some down in through here so I'm gonna start up on this top right hand side and really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of paint this edge in a pretty dark color um, you might find depending on how dark your background is that you want this to go fully black on this edge and that would only be if they're too similar in color so if you're going about this process and you end up losing the edge of your um, paintbrush applicator, you'll wanna perhaps go all the way black on that edge so that way um, you can see it next to your background. And that would, you know, that would only be depending on how, how dark your background is. So I've got that on, maybe I'll put, um, that's looking pretty well. I'm gonna put some down at the bottom, so magenta plus a little bit of black on my brush. And again, the intensity is gonna be visually how, how, how much you wanna go with it. So I'm just gonna kind of put a little bit on this right-hand side. This is also a great step to get rid of any chalk marks <laughs> that you might still have evident on your, on your canvas. So just kind of bringing this down a little bit on this right-hand side. Gonna pick up a little bit more magenta just to get these to blend in. I'm just utilizing this so I can get that shape of this droplet um, I think I'm going to put a tiny bit up in this top left hand corner too just so I can or the left hand um, side up in through here just so I can see the shape of the bottle I know that or of the applicator I know that we're going to have a big highlight in the liquid itself in the um, paint itself but this will help to show the form of it as well you could even put little um, jagged edges here I know that it's going to be filled with paint but that might help to give a little bit of contour in the liquid that's going through but that's about all I'm going to do for the for the shadowy areas so I'm going to um, wash and dry my brush I'm going to pick up some of that um, magenta plus a touch of white this is going to again give me my start to my highlights so this is magenta plus white on my brush. I want a big highlight up in this um, top left hand area. So magenta plus white is what I keep reloading my brush with. I want this to really look nice and fluid. So I'm gonna bring this highlight down in as if gravity is taking over. So I'm just bringing this down in through here. I'm not going all the way white yet because I really just wanna kind of build my way 
to that. I will be utilizing my red also in a minute, similarly to how I did the red um, on the nails themselves. But right now, just getting this highlight or the fluid to start to take um, to take shape and start to go in the direction that I want it to go. It's gonna come down in through here, and then I'm gonna have a big highlight kind of over on this um, left-hand side of the droplet. So I've got my magenta and white, and you can see that sometimes my combination of the magenta plus the white, sometimes it's lighter than others. Um, sometimes it sinks more into the the main color. That's okay. That's what a, that's what a highlight's gonna do. It's gonna have you know varying tones and shades within it. So don't feel like it, yours has to be exactly as mine, or it has to be exactly the same brightness or darkness throughout the whole thing. I think I want a little highlight in through there. So now what I'm gonna do is I wipe my brush off. I'm picking up some red paint, and I really wanna just amp up the some of this color so again it gives it that really um, vibrant tone to it I don't need to do the whole thing just kind of making sure that this beautiful red color is represented in some of this liquid that's just kind of coming down and making sure that I've got all of my chalk marks disappear. <laughs> Sometimes you think that you've got them all and then one just magically reappears. I'm gonna put some of this right in the center area so this gives this this beautiful pop of brilliance in the middle and through here. And then I'm gonna start putting my bright white highlight on. So once I've got all of that in there and I've got my fluid chain or my fluid direction that I want. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put some white paint on my brush and this is gonna give me my bright, bright highlight. And even if, like I, st I see that I still have some wet red paint, I'm cool with that. I can, I want everything to talk together so if some of these colors merge together with one another, I'm totally okay with that. So this is the time where I stop talking <laughs> and I wanna make sure that I've got my fluid going in the direction that I want. I'm gonna keep picking up my um, white paint. I think I want this to be a little bit wider up at the top and just kind of morph down into a more slender line as it is coming into the narrow, the more narrow channel of the, the fluid itself. So again, the white intensity doesn't have to be the same all the way. I'm going to put a really bright highlight over here and then this is going to kind of flow down in this direction and I'm just thinking what is you know fluid gonna do with gravity and it's gonna kind of you know just kind of drip down in through here and you can always if you if you feel that your paint isn't flowing good enough you I just picked up a tiny bit of magenta so as I'm going down into this little uh, slender area I don't necessarily want it to go all the way white but I I wanted there to be a little you know some some fluidity to it so I added a little bit of that magenta which helps me to keep my paint moving as well as maybe give me a different tonal value so you can you can use water you could use a little bit of the magenta whatever whatever works to just kind of continue that fluidity as you're working your way down these highlights and I'm kind of just building my way to the light so that way I have the different values within this vibrant um, reflection of sorts because that's in essence what this is and this could be reflecting anything so if you choose you could really you know use a different color to reflect to make the reflection as if there's a light or there's something else within this area that would um, that would reflect and then I would just sit here and, and fiddle so if I wanted this edge to be a little bit brighter I put a little bit more red on my brush if I wanted this fluid to look like it's kind of wiggling down the edge of the brush I can just use red with maybe a little bit of white and then just step back for a minute see if it's looking the way that I want it to look and then make any little adjustments that I feel are necessary and then we have one tiny little step left to go and it's going to be with this small brush so once you've got your your nail polish applicator <laughs> done you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step 
All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black paint. I sign mine with my initials, but you could sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting, you get to sign it however you'd like. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cool finger nail polish painting. <laughs> and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.